So many of the forms I make are straight sided, so every now and then I treat myself by making some more curvaceous pots. And in this video, I'll show you how I throw a tall bowl with curved sides and a narrow foot. But first, here are the tools I'll be using, which includes this old trimmer to tidy up the base, a sponge to scoop up water and to pull the walls up with. Next comes a sharp potter's needle to pop any air pockets with, or to trim the rim if it's undulating too much. Then there's my smaller kidney for cleaning up the inside, and my larger one for scraping the slip away from the outside surface of the pod. And of course there's the wire for separating the throne vessel from the wooden throne bat it's made on. I stick these MDF bats down by rubbing some water or slip onto the underside of them. I then place it onto the leather hard skim of clay, tap center it into the middle, and then I grasp it and firmly move it back and forward while pushing down. I then rub some slip onto the area where the ball of clay will be thrown against. I'm not soaking it, I just want the area to be slightly damp, so the lump of clay sticks onto it. Using my hand like a ladle, I douse the stoneware and water and begin the centering. I start by squeezing in with my little fingers around the base to seal the clay to the bat, and then I cone it up and down. This process helps to align all the particles in the clay, which should hopefully make the clay easier to throw with. I squeeze it between my palms and I constrict my grip as I move them up, forcing the clay into a smaller and smaller gap. I then lean the cone slightly over to one side as I push it down, which causes the stoneware to create a bulge lower down on the cone. If instead I pushed it directly down without leaning it over, a lump of clay would form up within my hands and it would become far more difficult to push that lump down into the shape I want. And the idea, for those who don't know, is to get the clay spinning as centrally as possible on the wheel head without any unnecessary undulations and so that it feels smooth under your hands. If you feel like there's a bump or you can see that your hands are moving around a lot, then the piece of clay needs to be centered further. I then push my thumb and index finger into the very center of the lump to form a well. And it's this hollow that'll ultimately become the interior form of the pot I'm making. At this point, I'm aiming to create a donut of clay with a sealed base. I want the bottom to measure about two centimeters thick as this excess clay will provide me with material to trim a nice tall foot ring from later on. I then pinch at the thick expanse of clay around the base and I gradually begin to pull the clay up and thin out the walls, gradually raising them higher. With my first lift, I'm not trying to get tons of height, rather I'm sort of setting the foundations for the following pulls. The walls can be so thick initially that they can be quite difficult to manage during the first pull, so I don't overdo it, and instead I'm just thinning them out enough to make the second pull all the more straightforward. Instead of using just my knuckle on the outside, for this following pull, I'll use a soaked sponge through which I'm pushing my fingers. This helps to keep the wall slightly more hydrated than it might be otherwise. But my primary reason for using it is that I feel like I can push a much larger indentation into the bottom initially, which then helps me draw up more clay. And even at this early stage, I'm already thinking about the final shape of my bowl, so I let the clay flow out of it as I let it pass through the gap in between the sponge on the outside and my fingertips on the inside. When my digits get to the rim, I very carefully release them, making sure I leave enough thickness in the rim to account for the clay being stretched out further and for the simple reason that I wanted this bowl to have a thick rim that sloped slightly inward once trimmed. As I pull the walls up, I constantly measure the thickness of them between my fingers. Ideally, I want them to be fairly even in cross section from bottom to top, but with bowls, there's almost always the tendency to have some extra thickness in the base and in the lower section of the walls. And if I were to throw the lower sections incredibly finely, then there's a chance they might not support all the clay above it, which can lead to the walls buckling, collapsing, or twisting. So whilst I do want the walls to be even, with some shapes, you do make allowances. And I did so with this one especially, as I want to trim a nice tall foot onto the bottom. And if I don't leave enough material in the base, well, then it's just not possible to do that. Now that the height's there, I'll begin to curve the walls out to my liking. I start at the bottom and I'm pushing out with more pressure from the inside as I move up. With bowl forms, so often the outside form follows the inside. So if I look inside the pot and the curve from top to bottom is nice and even, then the outside will probably follow suit. And even if the outside isn't perfect, I will eventually trim it once it's leather hard. And I find it's easier to correct any irregularities at that stage rather than really fussing over them at this point. 
and so I pulled the walls up nice and slowly while shaping it to my desired form. After this final pull, I'll then begin to go through the finishing procedures for this pot, which usually begins by removing all of the excess water from inside the bowl, which I can do with a piece of sponge. If this water is left in the pot overnight, it can oversaturate the clay in the base, making it incredibly damp, and therefore that area will take much longer to dry out as compared to the rest of the pot. I then use a curved metal kidney to begin scraping away all the excess slip away from the inner walls. I don't worry about removing every last drop, I just want to be rid of the worst of it and to ensure that the inner curve is nice and smooth, as ideally I don't want to trim the inner portion of a pot like this, as all the turnings would just accumulate in the base, falling and covering my trimming tool as I work, which would be a pain with such a deep form. With the inside done, I can now shift my focus to the outside, and I begin by just scraping away all the slip from bottom to top by gliding a sharp brass kidney over the surface. There's a slight undulation towards the top, which I think occurred when part of the wall stuck to the tool I was pushing against it. So at this point I just tried to push the inner wall out to meet the metal edge all the way around, which did partly work, but I try not to let undulations like this worry me too much, as if they're only very subtle like this. You'll never notice them once the wheel stops spinning. I then remove some of the excess clay from around the base, which I needn't do as I'm going to be lifting this pot away from the wheel via the wooden throwing bat beneath it. At the same time this is good practice as it removes much of the sticky clay around the bottom that would once again hinder how quickly this part of the pot dries out. I also scrape clean the bat of slip and the side of the MDF too. And as I want a sharp angular edge on the top of this bowl, I remove some of the slip away from this point as well. Lastly I drag a taut metal wire underneath the bowl to separate it from the bat, and then I use a screwdriver just to pry the wooden bat away. And for the time being, that's the pot finished. The following day, once it's leather hard, it will be turned and refined with sharp trimming tools. But I'll save that for next week. Thanks for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time.